Minions. I'm Kim Woody from Woody Artistry and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up if you like it. We're turning into the Cheshire Cat today in like a realistic format, so let's begin this tutorial. Very special thank you to my featured patrons, Brad Shear, Dantastic, and Zatstan. Thank you guys so much for going out of your way to throw me such a huge bone with my art. I have a design made and some ears made ahead of time, and I'm going to be using water-activated body paint to create this entire look. And if you're wondering what the weird suction cup mark on my chest is, I actually have been wearing a heart monitor all month, but it's off now at the time I'm recording this audio, so yay! But I am covering my entire body in pink body paint, and then I will be creating bands of purple body paint around my neck and my arms. This is to sort of bring in the design of the old school Cheshire Cat with sort of a revamped new realistic version. I'm laying down the purple, with a pretty big detail brush. And now I'll start adding the details of the fur. I wanted to have sort of like a puffy, lighter chest color that's pretty common in cats. So just with a light pink, I'm going over the dark pink and making it into a heart shape. So it'll fit nicely into February, by the way. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I hope you enjoy your chocolate and things. All right, I am outlining the edge of the fluffy chest area with a darker red pink tone. This is just going to add detail into the fur. So typically how I paint fur, which you guys probably know by now because I paint a lot of fuzzy things, is I lay down a mid-tone base tone color and then go over it with a darker tone color followed by a highlight. And then I will continue doing that over and over and over again until every square inch of my body is covered in a fur pattern. Repeat the highlighting process everywhere with the corresponding color. So obviously with the purple, I used a dark purple followed by a light purple. In the whiter area, I'm using less pink in my white. And in the pink areas, I'm having more pink in my white. Repeat this over and over again. A clever little trick I use to hide my hair since it's so long now is um, I will wrap it up in a bun and then cover it with a black band of fabric. Glue down your eyebrows, just make sure they're flat and smooth up against your forehead because I will be painting over these. So I am mapping out what I originally planned to be a design where the upper half of the face is sort of a color pattern reversal of the rest of the body because the original Cheshire Cat has like a very magenta part of his head above his mouth area, but it ended up just not looking right since I made something realistic. It just looked odd that the cat's entire patterns would change on the forehead. So ignore the forehead because I will be changing it later. I covered the face with pink and purple. I wanted to keep the muzzle mainly pink so it would pop forward more. And now I'm outlining my eye area and my eyebrows in a very light pink, kind of kind of whitish like the chest, and then adding more white to the muzzle as well. So when you're laying down your fur, it's important that it grows in the direction that it would naturally on a face. And this is obviously very odd to think about on a human, but if you look at a cat, and uh, you can see like the direction their fur grows and just mimic that, but on your face. Then with purple, I am adding dark stripes to the sides of my face and the center of the bridge of my nose. And then starting to add highlights to the entire face as well. This is where I decided that I didn't like the forehead at all. And this is what's fun with water activated body paint is you can just take a wet brush and go over it and kind of remove it and then smudge it out and it reset it almost back to the pink tone I started with. I decided I wanted to have eyebrows that were light and fluffy. Most kitties either have like white around their eyes and then like a black tuft above that. I kind of wanted to do that too. So I just made it white instead and then added purple stripes to the forehead, but I wanted it to be in the pattern similar to the original Cheshire Cat. I'm adding more highlights and building up the texture like I did on my chest and arms, but on my face. Usually with kitties, the further it gets away from their nose and closer to the outside of their face, the longer the fur gets. 
And a very important tip with laying fur is try to paint the lowest part first and then the highest point last. So in the instance of me painting my chin, it would be best to paint the lowest part first, go to the middle and then go to the top just under my upper lip. It'll create a realistic layering of fur. I am now moving onto my nose because you'll need your snoots to be a kitty cat. I am using a darkish red pink tone that's pretty much the same color as the original Cheshire Cat's nose, so it's rather vibrant. Adding white just above the nose, followed by a dark purple band, and outlining the edges of the nose as well, giving it some shading and definition. I want to be very patient with this part. There's a lot of detail right on the edge of the nose then add a little bit of a highlight. You can also dab out the highlights on the nose because most kitties' noses have a lot of texture to them. And then I'm adding some more highlights to the nose as well and a little bit of purple to mix in with my pink. Now to bring the muzzle forward, I'm going to be adding a lot of white little marks on the muzzle, followed by the dark spots, which is where the whiskers would come out using purple body paint. Anytime you're doing this much detail on the face, make sure you're using a really nice brush with a fine point that the hair doesn't fall out because you, you need the control. Yay, to my favorite part. Okay, I made these ears out of wool, just using needle felting techniques, and then I just pinned them into my hair. So I haven't tried this yet with super short hair, but hopefully it would work. But I pull my hair back into a ponytail, get it nice and smooth, and then clip on the ears using like four to five bobby pins. It works great. And then I just paint directly on top of my hair. I use the same pink from my body and my face and then transition the stripes up into my hair, just kind of continuing the patterns that are naturally occurring on my face. Make sure you paint your human ears a neutral tone that matches the rest of the body so the viewer just kind of ignores them. And I'll also be hiding them with floofs. So with more floofies, I'm going to use Prosade, which is a skin safe adhesive, applying it to my sideburn area. Um, just paint it on and then let it sit. You wanna wait till it goes clear before you apply anything. And then I have a mix of different needle felting wool colors that I am laying into the glue. Now that the floofs are done, I'm going to put in contacts, which I have here, and then fill in the area around my eyes. I always leave my eyes, my nose, and my lips last so I can blow my nose, put in contacts, and eat things. But it is time. So I'm painting my eyelids purple now, and I'll be using a shimmery powdered purple eyeshadow just to make sure they don't crack. It is very difficult to keep your body paint from cracking on your eyelids, so the longer you can wait to do those at the end, the better. And I usually seal them in a thousand times, not really a thousand, probably like six times, um, with a fixative spray. I use MAC Fix Plus, it works great, and it helps it from cracking and fading. Adding a couple more highlights to the nose just because I thought it needed it, and adding the final touch, which is filling in my purple lip, or filling in my lip with purple, fixing the hair around it and then extending the edge of my smile slightly to be more Cheshire catty and adding some really cool fangs that my friend Stavros from Chaos Custom Fangs made me and then I got a nosebleed so enjoy me bleeding for a second but here's the cat. I love how it turned out. This was such a huge difference from my first Cheshire cat attempt back in 2016. For all you OGs that actually have seen that video, go back and watch it and just look at the, the major difference. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Let me know if you want to see any other characters. Thank you guys so much for sticking the end of this video. I really hope you like it. Talk about a glow up. I wanted to redo an old look. I did a Cheshire Cat back in 2016, maybe 2017, and I hated it. And now here we are. I wanted to recreate um, both a mix of the Disney's hand-drawn Cheshire Cat with the Tim Burton one and make my own original OC. And I made these ears out of wool. These are also wool. I love it. This is one of my favorites ever now, for sure. I got to combine my three favorite things, which is uh, painting fur, 
whimsical things and creepy things. So I really hope you guys like it. Please let me know what you think. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and please subscribe if you haven't already so you can be part of the Witty Artistry family because we, we, we love you and we would like you to stick around. Um, also, huge shout out to my wonderful Patreon producers. Whoa. Without you guys, I couldn't create makeups like this or videos like this or afford any of this stuff. So thank you so much for supporting what I do and, and feeding me. You guys are amazing. I love you and I'll see you in the next video.